So I've already made a few videos about this and the topics and I screenshot it through on the community page and now we're having a Facebook discussion on who this guy is. Uh, he claims to be Rudy's number one fan and he claims to own a lot of magic cards, a lot a thousand power nine alpha beta. He claims to be a billionaire from Silicon Valley. He is sending multiple businessmen to come to my home tonight to beat me up. And now I've been blacklisted from Silicon Valley and every single comp company with a CEO in Texas has now blacklisted me. And uh, he's also a racist. <laughs> and he, you know, th these are interesting characteristics about this individual. When I dug a little bit deeper, I did find his real name. Um, I probably shouldn't say it here, but nonetheless, you know, we're going to Facebook chat about it probably. Maybe I'll, I'll no, I, I'll do the courtesy he didn't do to me. So I'll, I won't dox him, uh, even though he is clearly on a doxing spree. Uh, <laughs> he's doxing me like crazy right now online on 4chan, on Reddit and so on. But like, I have nothing to hide. And that's the beauty of, you know, being me is I, my life is public. My company is, you know, we do marketing. So we are out there. I have an NFT company on the MTG line, Reddit on I mean, it's not like I'm trying to hide where I live, where, and you know, and it's crazy to me that people would, would threaten you over this and threaten over blacklisting you and beating you up and sending businessmen who are looking for me. Uh, and you know, it's pretty fascinating. But the reason I think he mentions Rudy and there's a psychology thing I wanna go into right now. The reason I think he mentions Rudy, of all people, you know, he could have mentioned Tolarian, he meant, meant, mentioned Wedge, which the video I made that he commented was about Wedge. And uh, he subscribed to Rudy and Tolarian and the Mana Source. So he must be maybe older. Maybe older. Uh, and then he's like, you know, if you knew what level I was on, you would be pe peeing your pants or something. And then racist, 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 or, you know, like, you know, a lot of things. Um, and I kind of wonder like why, and this is not the first comment I received. And again, I do use Rudy's name because I want, it's like a response video. And that's what I enjoy making. I think it's an interesting topic. And my perspective is not always, in fact, sometimes it's the same, 95% of times it's not. And I enjoyed, you know, those conversations. And I'm pretty sure Rudy does watch the videos because there are subtle things that he says Remember the video where he was like, oh, not every store owner is a millionaire. That came right, if you look at the time of upload, you know, I think I, I do give him ideas too because there are subtle things that obviously points at one channel. You know, when I'm talking about stores having millions of dollars and then beginning really rich and then buying places, a card collector too, Mark's card, like every sports card YouTube channel I have became a, went from a backpack trader to owning the owning property, not renting property, owning property. So I made a video about that. And then I saw a video a few days after saying, oh, you know, they're not millionaires and so on. And obviously then people on Facebook will contact me and say, watch this clip, watch that clip. And I do watch, I don't, I'll be honest, I don't watch all the videos. I don't watch my own videos. <laughs> I do watch parts of the videos that my subscribers on you know on Facebook or LinkedIn send me and I look at it on Reddit, you know, and I look at it and I say, oh, that's pretty interesting. But he does have very good topics. I, I actually think he's a very smart business person and a lot of his model is copyable, but hard to execute. And it's kind of like, if you had that many sealed boxes, wouldn't you want to open some? I would want to open some, but that eats in your inventory. And that's actually what I did with Pokemon Evolutions. I opened so much, I opened $10,000 I can show you the collection later of evolutions instead of selling it because that's what I did. So Rudy Chan would never, never open it. He would just sell it. He would only open if a patron already paid him for it. And that's what I should have done. Like the box breaking, which I tell you is incredibly profitable, right? Um, for Pokemon. But instead I, I just opened it and you saw on this channel, I opened, I think 142, 150, maybe some insane amount of um, 10 packs. I think it's like Jirachi, best wishes. I opened even more of Evolutions. Like I opened, I think 
20 boxes of Revolution looking for Charizard, and I found them. I, I found them, but they're not at a good ratio. And I think I even lost money, even at 84. No, 84 dollars is kind of hard to lose money on in Pup Rocks. But anyway, um, I, just like I use a buy list from Card Kingdom, or I use a buy list from Channel Fireball, I use a buy list from Star City Games, I look at what Rooney's talking about, and I listen. And I say, huh. Why is Rudy saying this? And how is Rudy behaving? And I have a little bit more inside information than you do because people who try to sell Rudy cards also try to sell me cards at the same time. Now, not always at the same price. In fact, many times they ask for a two times multiplier <laughs> for me to buy it. But it's the same collections. And I know because I've seen the collections. And a guy tried to sue me for making a video and it was, and no one can disprove this because the BGS numbers were the same. So it was a graded, it was two graded cards and the ID number matched up perfectly with what the guy wanted to sell me at. And then Rudy mentions that what price he bought it at and the same cards I was offered at twice as much money. Um, where the guy wouldn't go a nickel down. And I have all of this email. And then he, and then after and a year later, when the cards are very valuable now, like, we're talking about foil reserve list, Yagamera's Hollow, Legendary Land from Urza's Destiny, PSA 10, the only of its type. I don't know if there's any more, but I would suspect it's the only one of its type. The only PSA 10 that exists right now. Probably $4,000 for just that card. And there's another reserve list foil card as well. I forget if it was a 10 or a nine or something like that. But my gosh, when Rudy got it, it was a incredible deal. So like for me, why wouldn't I look at what Rudy's doing and tried my best to do it? I, I'm sure a lot of people do it that way. I don't view Rudy as a competitor because he has a lot more money than I do and he has a bigger collection than I do. It would be silly for me to think for the same price the guy would have sold me the cards for $300. No way. No way in hell would the guy sell me the cards for anything close to what Rudy got the cards at. And that is brilliant. So a lot of what Rudy's doing is marketing and when he makes, you know, marketing, when he's saying, oh, Power 9, oh, no one buy listing anymore. When he means like no one, he just means one store. I have seen that people are trying to just buy list their cards to me now. He's created a semi-earthquake and I assume that the earthquake was created so people sell cards to him. But sometimes people don't like the prices he gives them. And then they go back, and, and for me especially, I actually sell reserve list cards to you, like in person. So I'm not holding them with diamond hands. If you wanna buy something for your EDA, I will sell you reserve list. I will sell you as many reserve list cards as you want. I'm not holding them for like their life. So I think when, you know, I wanna talk about this issue because a lot of my, you know, haters and this, you know, one, this billionaire from Silicon Valley who's blacklisted to me and every single company, um, they think that there's some animosity between me and Rudy. I don't think there is, at least not from my side. He's an interesting guy with an interesting business model that I think is correct. Now, could I look at a bunch of Weiss cards and, you know, if I bought Weiss cards for, here, here's the thing. If I buy something really cheap and that something really cheap goes up, I still think it's really cheap. I think it's just think it's cool to open it now. Like I open my own boxes, Rudy does not. That's a huge difference in control, right? So if I have Innistrad boxes, I'm, I, I'm itching to draft it, like original Innistrad. Rudy just keeps it sealed in a vault somewhere and that's, that's it's gone. If I have underground seas, I will sell them. And I have sold them. I mean, I'm not diamond handing the underground seas, right? I'm just trying to, you know, make a little cheddar, if you will. So my model is more consistent with a store model where we are trying to flip things for profit. Sometimes we, we lose money when there's a dip, of course. But Rudy's model is very different. And no, God bless that he can do that model. Because if I had a bunch of Weiss cards, he made a Weiss video. All I want to do is open the Weiss cards, get the SP cards and put the SP in my collection and throw the rest in bulk. That's why I did for Met, and that's why I love these games that are 
like the same games Rudy puts money into. Buddy Fight, um, Card Fight Vanguard, um, what was that other game? Force of Will. I like opening cheap product. Like I love Inuyasha, Dragon Ball Z, like all these products I, I think are amazing because I can have a good time with my friends. I have a good time by myself opening them in private. Um, I, I just, you know, I mean, you see my Meta X collection. I think there's like, I opened something like 10,000 booster packs during COVID-19. Fantastic, you know, I, I, I had a blast at a time in my life. Um, so I'm a little different, you know, and I actually do play the game. I do play, I play Magic every single day on MTG Arena. It's my favorite mobile game. I play for at least an hour and if not two hours. I draft every single day on MTG Arena. I have two accounts and I play my friends. And if they don't have an account, I just give them the second account. The decks are fully loaded anyway. So my second account, I already have all the decks built as well. And we, we play Historic. Um, that's kind of the, my favorite format right now. Historic is really fun. I play Coco. I have Coco. I have the Sacrifice one. I have um, the, what's it called? The food one. I have Gruel, which was the, uh, the shaman that produces that cost two and produce two. And that's a really fun deck to play. I have goblins, I have elves. Like I play magic. So like I would want to open the cards, of course. So if I had a bunch of collector's edition, I would just open them. I wouldn't record it. I'd just open them and be like, oh, cool. I got something. Hi guys.